Hello, my name is Stephen Knight. This is the second part of the e-signatures session, where in this part we're looking at DocuSign. In part one we looked at eSign. Uh, looking at DocuSign, you'll find very similar functionality, but uh, much stronger and more effective tie-in with Office 365, with SharePoint Online, although, as we'll see, not perfect. There are some things where people will need to think about data being out of their control for part of the process and weigh that up against the advantages of the whole e-sign concept. For a small business like me, as I said in part one, the advantages far outweigh the issues. And with DocuSign, we'll see that the signed document is returned back into our SharePoint library. E-Sign doesn't do for us, we would need to do that manually. It is an additional cost, whereas if you've got a subscription to Adobe, if you've got a subscription to Acrobat DC, then you have the basic E-Sign tools as part of that. So although we're still paying no matter what. If you're not a an Acrobat professional user, then the basic package for DocuSign would probably be better value because you can get that by itself. So swings and roundabouts, I will leave you to look at the economics to see what suits your particular situation. Uh, so what we'll do now is we will get into having a look at DocuSign. Just a very quick run through of what's been happening here in section one, which you will find elsewhere on YouTube, in my channel, for example, we had a look at creating a PDF from Word into SharePoint using Acrobat DC Professional. And we had a look at the process of saving and checkout and metadata and how all of that worked. We then used that PDF uh, from within Acrobat Professional and sent it for a signature we saw the reports and how that worked, the audit trail that we got. And then we also went and used the online eSign interface, which just, I felt, gave us a bit more control over the process, positioning signatures, which we will see some strong parallels. Now we're in part two, having a look at the DocuSign uh, tool and looking at it from SharePoint Online and looking at the reports we get from that. This is where I think we'll see in this process the one advantage I did see for DocuSign in that its integration with SharePoint is much better. The end result, the approved or signed document, is returned to a folder within the SharePoint library. Whereas with DocuSign, we've got to do that manually. Right, let's run through the process of using DocuSign. This time we're starting from the library in SharePoint Online in Office 365. And the other prerequisite here is we've already installed the DocuSign app. And I've linked my Office 365 account to my DocuSign account. Now I'm just on the DocuSign account that gives you three documents for starting off with. It's a good place to start to evaluate, do I want to spend the money to go further? The answer, I think, is probably yes, but uh, let, let me show you how this works so you can come to your own conclusions. So where we are, with the actual app installed, uh, I've got here a couple of ways of getting into it. Now, this is the long way through following the, the trail of ellipses, the three dots. You'll notice I've got go to DocuSign, get signatures with DocuSign, or I can sign it with DocuSign, or I can go in and see where it's at, which is equivalent to the manage that was in uh, eSign. So that's one method. The other way, and I think this is going to just be easier to show your colleagues this method, is I have an additional tab for DocuSign. So I've actually started off by selecting the document. So I've got my sample document selected. I'm going to go up to the ribbon here. I've clicked the DocuSign tab. I'm going to choose Get Signatures. This takes me on an extra step. Now, where we actually are heading here, and this is a little bit where some of the process is outside of SharePoint, is um, we're into the DocuSign site.
and I've already associated my Office 365 and my DocuSign account so that the two work together and so we've logged in and I will now return so what I've done here, I'm adding my first signer in. I've put the name, the email address and their role in the process. So these people need to sign. Maybe they just need to see it, but this person needs to sign. And then I'm going to add the signer and then I can add an additional signer. In this case, I'm going to add me because I want it to come back to me and maybe I need to do the final authorization. So I've got two signers here uh, and I'll now continue. I have a covering letter uh, where I can ask people to please review and sign. So I've got my covering note. It's now taking me into the DocuSign interface. We get a few more options. Now, this is similar to the process with eSign. We can add signature fields, we can add initial fields. Now you'll notice these extra fields that are locked up. These are premium features, which uh, if I would need to go to the paid subscription to get those, still very useful, uh, particularly uh, as, as I mentioned with eSign, we could use these to capture some additional information with the document as well. Now, maybe reasons for decision being a possibility there. So what I've got, I've got my particular person selected. I'm going to scroll up and I want the first person to initial there. Actually, I'm going to initial there because I'm actually the second person. And if I go to my first person, I'll get them to initial there. So comparable sort of functionality, although uh, we saw with eSign I had to go to the online interface for this sort of functionality, whereas running it through Acrobat DC uh, basically did a more straightforward process. Probably depends what you're after. Uh, so I'm going to get a signature from that person and then I'm going to say, look, give me a signature for this person. So I've effectively said this is where we need to put things. Uh, I can review the document one last time. There it is there. And I think we're good to go. You'll notice how these little signatures, if you need to check, they're color coded. So we can see which initials and which signatures belong to which people. Uh, we've got other actions here if we needed to take other steps, but I think this is good to go. So let's send that off and that's on its way. So what I'm going to do is go and get my email and we'll continue the process from there. So now I have my first email as a participant in the process asking me to review and sign the document. I'll just show you the pictures that come with it. There we go. So that's come from me to my alter ego and now I'm going to review this document so I could be an external uh, person and in fact this is one of the advantages of this stepping outside of SharePoint for this actual approving is that even though we're letting go of some control on oh, that you may have heard a bing there is an email coming through to tell me that someone's looking at this so they've actually done this step so it says, please review this document. So let's go continue and we'll review the document. And I've got a little start link, which takes me down to where I've got to initial. 
So where we saw with sign, we had uh, links up the top right here. It's driven effectively by this little metaphor. I'm sure we've all seen these on contracts and things. We've got a sign. So I'm going to say, yes, I will uh, initial here. And it's remembered my details. I could modify these. Uh, so I've got name and initials. And I'm happy with that. But again, I could draw this or select uh, different styles if I wanted to go with something a little bit of a different look. But I've also got draw. I'm going to adopt and initial. So that's initial that section of the document that I have seen that clause and I am happy with it. And I could go, so I've done my initialing, I can come down now and sign and based on the signature that I just uh, set up, that's my signature, uh, so that's there and we're pretty much good to go. I can, I do have other actions but I'm just going to finish this and that will move it on to the next step. And so that's taken me out of DocuSign. I could now, as a DocuSign user, log in to do the next step. But what I will find is I've now got some email. So let's have a look. This is all very nicely integrated. So it's now come to me to complete the final step of the process. So I just click the link. We go online. And here's the document and I can review this and see that other people have signed in the appropriate spots so it's all been initialed so I can initial my bit and also sign where I'm required to sign and I'm actually done with that so I can finish it now I'm also done with DocuSign at this point that. so I can now return to my document library and I have this folder for DocuSign documents where I can actually see in the DocuSign documents the signed actual reports. So that's the output from the process. And here it is here. Signed, complete with the actual audit trail, IP addresses, and all the rest of it all here uh, for all the signing that's taken place with this particular document. Now there's some features here that they're referring to that in the basic package I don't have, but nevertheless we can see this is certainly equivalent to what we saw with eSign as far as an audit trail goes. Possibly going a little bit further, having the advantage that the process document is returned to us in our SharePoint library going into our DocuSign documents folder and if I have a look at the actual document itself the original document that triggered the process is still there in its original form but we've got the signed output kept in our DocuSign documents so we've got that back here so if necessary we could go into DocuSign and actually get rid of data that's stored in DocuSign every so often if we needed to, keeping the end result here. But if we also need to go back to DocuSign and just see where things are at, we can from within SharePoint go to DocuSign. Just as an aside here, using Microsoft Edge, where I had a few little issues with Edge in the early days with Office 365, but it now all seems to be working fairly well. So we can now see here in the documents area, we can see our completed documents, we can see what stage they're actually uh, at, uh, and we also have uh, templates here that you can use, and in the home area we also have a reference to their mobile app, which is available iOS and Android, I believe. So, and so that's basically it. Uh, 
I won't go any further with that. Uh, so comparable to eSign, but I think with uh, some advantages for Office 365 users in that it is nicely uh, tied back into SharePoint, but we do need to accept that it is using this cloud storage for storing the data and the processing and exchanging copies of the document. You could, when the processes are complete, you could select and delete uh, documents that are no longer relevant, uh, perhaps to get rid of that data, just to uh, not be too exposed security-wise with having your commercial and confidence stuff online. Remembering that we do have back in SharePoint, uh, back in Office 365, we've got copies of the signed, sealed and delivered uh, content. So you will need to have a think about what the ramifications are for your organisation with having the document leave the safe haven of your Office 365 uh, storage, Given, bearing in mind that is in the cloud as well. Comparing that with the advantages, which I see for me as a small business in that I'm quite happy for confidential document to at least temporarily live outside of SharePoint because what I'm also then not having to do is give third parties access to my SharePoint site. So pros and cons, but I think well worth investigating. Both uh, similar products probably depends what you would choose on cost and features and what you actually need it to do. But it's got a lot of potential, I think, as a technology electronic signatures for small business, no matter which platform you choose. Thank you for your time. Uh, bear in mind, or please be aware, that I am available for Acrobat training uh, where we can cover topics like this. I also do Office 365, SharePoint Online, SharePoint On-Premise, end-user oriented training, either directly or through uh, all leading training providers within Australia. Also, if you need support or tutoring, I've got Skype for Business, uh, what was formerly Link, and we can always do support over that technology as well. Thank you for your time. My name is Stephen Knight. Goodbye for now.